All right, cool. So this is actually going to be a, a rather quick demo, just because the new modeling tools are, uh, although they're very powerful, they're also very easy to use and they're very fast. So uh, let's just jump right into it and get started. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate most of the tools on this character here, and I already went ahead and separated the, the head into the first layer. Let's switch to a textured wire view, and the first tool I'm going to show is the new unwrapping tool. So let's go into the map tab, and you'll see we have ABF UV unwrap, that's angle-based flattening. So let's hit the space bar and get into edges, and let's define our seam, and then if you hit the right arrow key, it'll select a loop, it's been mapped to that key. So let's uh, get rid of those there. And we'll just go ahead and check that. And let's switch to UV texture. And right there, you see we have our map. I'm going to undo that and do it again so you can see how quick it happens. Boom. There's no intersecting geometry. It's all very clean. So it's just, it's just very fast. All right. So. Let's take a look at uh, edge loops now, controlling edge loops. We have a new Edit Edges tool under the Detail tab. Let's see, we have Edit Edges. If you highlight over an edge, it's very useful. You get this uh, orange ring, and if it connects, that goes to show that it's a, a full loop. If you left click it and drag to the left and right, it'll go up and down. If you control click and drag to the left and right, it'll only do that specific edge. A very useful feature is if you're on a, uh, an edge loop that is vertical and you uh, see here, right here, and you right click, you'll get a new edge loop. And if you're on an edge loop that's horizontal and you right click, you'll get a vertical edge loop. So now it's very easy to control edges and it's completely interactive and you know, it's, it's very fast to do that. Let's get out of that tool. And the next uh, editing edges tool that I want to show you is the slice tool. So let's uh, get back into the top view here. And under the detail tab, or actually, I'm sorry, the multiply tab, there's slice. What is it here? Subdivide. Multiply, subdivide. Subdivide. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Slice. And now you can see how easy it is to click on a vertex point, hold the control key down, and that will snap to the center of an edge. And let's actually just get into uh, out of sub D mode. So we'll select there and hold the control key down. It's very easy to now uh, draw edges, however you wish. And let's just end that right there. Drop the tool. So it's just awesome how interactive these tools are and how easy and fast they are to use. All right, the next tool I want to show is a tool called Place Mesh. So I went ahead and took one of the horns that were on top of this guy's head, and uh, I placed it into a layer completely by itself. And now let's go to the body layer, and we're going to swap layers by hitting the apostrophe key. And let's zoom in here. All right, let's go to the Multiply tab, and you'll see under here we have a tool called Place Mesh. The Place Mesh tool will take any background object and apply it to on top of the mesh of the foreground object. So if you click and you go drag to the right or to the left, it'll rotate it. If you drag down and up, it'll scale it. And it's easy to just keep clicking and you know easily adding uh, nernies on ships, in this case, we're adding spikes on this guy's back. You know, it's just so intuitive and, and easy to use. So we can get out of that tool. Let's check this out. You know, it's just, it's awesome. All right. So let's go to the third layer here where I built uh, uh, a mask. And it's just a, a single-sided polygon. And we're going to go to a tool called Heat Shrink. And it's under the Modify tab, Heat Shrink. Let's hit uh, end to bring up the numeric panel, and we're going to change our mode to the Z axis. And all we're going to do is just click and drag, and we're going to see that it just snaps to the object. And uh, I'll show you in a second how that detail is still really there in the mask. Uh, but I'm going to move it away about 0.5 millimeters, actually one millimeter. And let's get out of that tool. 
And now I'm going to show you another new tool called Thicken, which is under the Multiply tab. Thicken. Let's go in here. Let's bring up the Numeric Options panel and make sure we're set to the normals of, uh, of that geometry. And if we click and drag, you can see that it easily will do that. But I'm just going to set it to about 0.5 millimeters. And let me go in here to this edge and turn on Textured Wired View. And we can actually adjust the segments in that extruded area. So let's keep it at, say, 3. And I'm going to check this Create New Surface, both of them, for the new surface and the side surface. I'm going to drop the tool. Let's hit Shift A to fit selected. And turn our foreground layer on and get out a textured wire. Under the surface editor, we now have thickened, which is the area that's been thickened. And you can see that we need to move it away slightly from the geometry. And then we have thickened side. as you can see there. Let's just select that geometry and move it away a little bit. And just look at the detail that that had. You know, all because of heat shrink, it just snapped right on there and it was, it was that easy to do. So the next tools that I want to demonstrate to you are going to uh, mainly be done with um, simple primitives just because they're, they're easily demonstrated that way. So Let's just create a box. I'm going to center that by hitting F2. And we all know edge bevel. So let's select these two edges. And we'll go to more edge bevel. And you know we all know that it's controlling it as if selecting the entire polygon and beveling it. Well, now there's a tool called chamfer, where it stays true to edges. So if we use this tool, you can see that it's only beveling those edges. The cool thing about chamfer is that if we undo that and we select the polygon, it's going to bevel it exactly how edge bevel did. Or we can select all the points and use chamfer on those. You can see we're now beveling those points. So this is great. It's definitely um, an enhanced edge bevel tool, and you know it's it, it's awesome. I love it. So let's get out of that. And let's just create uh, a few more simple primitives. I'm going to create a ball. And we're also going to create a box. And I think that everyone here is going to be really excited about these. Let's, uh, let's rotate this box into a position that's kind of weird. Right? And what I want to do is, actually, let's just rotate that a little more. I want to take a polygon on this ball and have it snap to this surface here. So let's select this ball, and then we'll go to Modify, and we'll go to Align, and pick a line. You can see that when I highlight over the ball, we get this little orange dot that tells me I'm on a surface. So I'm going to select that once, and select this surface here, and boom, it just instantly snaps there. And I mean, that would be really hard to do with a standard rotate tool. But now that we have this, it's, it's you know two clicks, and you got it. Let's undo that. We also have Pick Translate. If I hover over a vertex point, you'll see it says vertex. And for this one, we have to click and drag. And when we, it'll snap to a point. Instantly, it just moves right there. Now let's undo that. Let's do it again. So pick any vertex point. You know, drag it, snaps, and then you're right there. And now this is probably one of my favorite uh, new translate tools. It's the, the pick rotate. So we're going to keep our ball selected. And we're going to hover over this vertex point. We're going to click and drag to this vertex point here. And let me expand this. And now if you just left click, it'll rotate from that selection. So what's, what's great about these new modeling tools is that, again, they're very interactive. And this uh, pretty much opens up the doors for us uh, as to making new tools that are very fast and very efficient and just allow you to create better and faster art. And that's really what I have to show you guys. Those are all the new main uh, modeling tools. But we are going to be getting a lot of tutorials soon uh, demonstrating these. So be sure to check those out on lightwave3d.com. And you know, just remember that with Lightwave, you get a complete solution. And that's what we're all about. So thank you.